Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Summer of Carnage right here in the Venom vlog. And honestly, I just didn't want to break up these next three books over three episodes because we're running low on episodes. I'm trying to get all of Absolute Carnage and any other movie news that might pop up. I want it all done before episode 450 because that's the end of our season. And I was like, oh man, the weight, you know, the rate we're going at because there's so many tie-ins and some new ones that they just added in for like the last week of November or the like middle week of November or something like that with like Weapon Plus and everything. Uh, we have, we're getting too close to 450. And so uh, also I've been making videos like nonstop and I've been editing other stuff. And obviously, you know, I'm not feeling very well right now and my energy level is a little down. So I thought, you know what, let's just put all the energy I have left into one more video and let's just talk about all three tie-ins that came out this week for Absolute Carnage and we'll give out the digital codes for each one as I talk about them and I'll just be as brief as possible with these because I'll be honest um, I wasn't a big fan of any of these although the Scream one I think is my favorite uh, the Deadpool one had some good moments on it until the end I felt like the final like the finale if you want to call it the third act or whatever I felt like it kind of fell apart and it kind of went more for hey let's tell jokes and not really wrap up this story or give you any insight on the conclusion of this and then also let's skip ahead and just kind of you know take out some of the oomph of the ending of the story so I wasn't really feeling the Deadpool ending um, but I did like the book up until then the Avengers one is kind of, I'm like really on the line on because uh, I thought it was going to be about the battle that, uh, you know, happened between them fighting Null. And I was thinking, oh, maybe it'll take place present day because we didn't get a lot of that battle in Absolute Carnage 4. So that's why this tie in exists. And maybe we'll see that battle and then they'll flash back to like previous things or something like that. And that's what I was thinking the structure was going to be. And maybe that's a little unfair to try to predict. Uh, you know, it's not that I was disappointed that they didn't do that. I was like, oh, okay, they're not doing that. They're going to do their own thing. And they kind of deviated from my expectations. Let's see what story they do tell. But it was just kind of a mess storyline, really. And I guess it's going to set up uh, to pay off in Ven Venom number 19 with Hawkeye, but we'll get there in a minute. Uh, I want to talk about the book I liked about, you know, like the most first, which is Scream number three. And so again, as always, without further ado, boom, there's the digital code. First person to put that code in gets a digital copy of Scream number three. So let me know what your review is down below if you got that code. And if you liked the book or disliked it, whatever it is, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And everybody else who's read the book, let me know what your thoughts are down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Uh, so Scream number three uh, by Colin Bunn and Sandoval, who does the artwork. Um, you know, this was a, a, overall an okay issue. Um, I like the determination inside Andy, and I liked Patricia Robertson. She, I think she went out like a G. <laughs> uh, she went out pretty tough, I feel, and uh, she really tried, and that was the thing, is that, you know, some of these people, they do have to die because Carnage does have to win overall to help, you know, raise the stakes higher and everything. So I felt like there was a good balance of that. I think Colin Bunn did a good job, uh, you know, uh, you know, taking out some people and clean, kind of cleaning the slate a little bit and, you know, and kind of clearing some pieces off the chessboard uh, and also setting up, you know, the tension and building up the scares, but then also, you know, having a nice payoff at the end. Although really the, the victory here is that Andy Benton turns and runs away. But the victory is that she lives and she wasn't gonna, no doubt about it. Like uh, anyone who's fighting Carnage at this point is pretty much just gonna die. I mean, he killed a, you know, Ghost Rider for crying out loud uh, and took Alejandra's, you know, codices and stuff. So, or codex. So, um, you know, having Andy Benton, she, you know, her fire not even hurting him when she was, you know, tapping into her Hellfire power back in the funeral pyre issue. So she really has no weapons against him. So it was luckily that, you know, Scream showed up because Scream gave her a way to fight back at least long enough to survive. So that's what I liked about this issue. It was, um, you know, uh, two women basically trying to fight against Carnage and one of them being able, uh, actually neither of them really being able to hold their own. I mean, they do what they can, uh, but ultimately they're overpowered and Carnage, you know, he picks up Andy and like puts her on a hook. So there's like a hook goes right into her back and he's like, all right, hang out here for a second and I'm gonna, you know, go kill Scream because she's not listening to my orders. And that's what I also liked, unlike the, you know, the Miles Morales story where he takes control back and he's like, all right, I'm Miles Morales and now I have a symbiote and I'm going to go fight Carnage. And then he doesn't do that. In this one, at least Scream says, I'm going to fight back and she does. Uh, so that's good. You know, I'm glad that's in here. 
and Scream does, you know, with Patricia Robertson and she has Donna Diego's voice still floating in her head and the Scream costume. So it's these three voices, you know, uh, trying to fight for control and they fight back and they all unite against Carnage. But Carnage ultimately wins. But like I said, there's such a tough moment. We're going to get into some spoilers here, uh, but because I can't not talk about this. It reminds me of there was this uh, issue of Batman Superman where Nightwing was, um, you know, invaded the Oval Office with all the sidekicks, like all the other Robins and, you know, other uh, sidekick characters and steel and stuff like that um and they break into the oval office to take down you know president lex luther and he releases a gas in the room that knocks everyone out except nightwing and then you know uh, lex luther is hopped up on bane juice too so he's punching nightwing and nightwing's too slow by the gas to fight back but he's just getting pummeled and his face is getting bruised his eye gets busted and uh, lex luther goes fall like fall over fall down and uh, Nightwing says, no, never. I'll never fall to you. And I love that. It's like he didn't win the fight, but he totally spit in the face of his enemy. That's kind of what goes on here. And I really like that. I think Colin Bunn did a good job with, uh, you know, Donna Diego slash Patricia Robertson and slash Scream, you know, spitting in the face of Carnage and not giving him what he wants. Even though Carnage does kill her and he has the, the dead body of Patricia Robertson. And I think at the end, there's a line where he says he's going to take the codex from her um, as Andy got away. But uh, before he kills her, like, you know, he full on, you know, stabs her and cuts her up really bad. And then she's falling and she hits the ground. And then she's like, don't die, don't die. And she's like, you know, remember who you are. You're Donna Diego. You know, you're, you're Patricia Robertson. You're Scream. Fight back. If you're going to die, like you're dead, no matter what, you're going to die from all these wounds. But take Carnage with you. And she gets up in one last move and she like wrap. And this is like dark Carnage. This is like the real Carnage, not Norman Osborn being sent in. Um, it's dark Carnage. I think it is dark Carnage. <laughs> um, and because uh, I think he says something like, uh, you know, I am the one and only and uh, and only I could come in and do this. You know, or I only don't send a, a woman to do a man's job or something sexist like that. But in keeping with who the character is, obviously, he's kind of a scumbag and a serial killer. So uh, he comes in and, uh, you know, so it's, it's them two going at it and she wraps around him and she oh, she's like t trying to take him down, uh, but she ultimately doesn't have any strength and she falls to the ground and she dies. Patricia Robertson officially dies in continuity. And uh, I was blown away by that moment. I was like, hey, thanks for letting her go out like that, because I know she's not a lot of people's favorite characters. Um, you know, one of, no one's favorite character, really. Um, but I do like Patricia. I liked what they did with her in the run before. And I always wondered what happened to her. So it was nice to see her come back one last time and go down swinging. And she really does. So I felt like that was Colin Bunn trying to pay a little bit of respect to a character that maybe he maybe doesn't even like either. Uh, but I feel like he still gave her a really good moment in this one. And because Andy sees her sacrifice, Andy's like, I'm not going to win this. And the suit leaves Patricia's body and then bonds with Andy. So it looks like Andy's going to be the new Scream going forward, possibly in the new ongoing series that's coming out soon or miniseries, whatever it is going to be. So uh, that's exciting because I like the character and I want to see more of Andy and more of what they do with her. And uh, hopefully they'll explore that more. But in this one, at the end, she says, you know, I can't fight Carnage alone. Maybe I'll go find someone out there who can help me fight him. Uh, so I guess it'll we'll have to wait and see if she shows up in issue five of Absolute Carnage. If she does, that'll be great because that means she can and fight back and you know maybe get uh, a couple licks in or at least see carnage get defeated because uh, that'll probably be big for her character arc at this point is to get a little bit of closure there and see carnage get defeated um so hopefully this is not going to be like miles morales where they you know donny capes doesn't you know pay off what this sets up uh so i hope we get to see andy again one more time before the absolute carnage event ends uh but that's my you know my review of this i feel like this was like maybe a, a three and a half out of five uh, or you know i maybe i'll go up to a four uh, i feel like this was a, a four the artwork was good um and i thought the writing was pretty consistent throughout and i think this was better than the second or the first issue was my least favorite second issue got a little better and this one i thought was a pretty good ending and it makes me excited to see what they're going to do with andy in the upcoming series for sure uh, now, next up, let's talk about Avengers. This is a one shot that came out. This Clayton Crane, I think, cover here. Um, I think that's Clayton's artwork. It looks a little bit like Clayton. Uh, but the, you know, the issue itself was just kind of meh. Like, I thought it was, again, like I said, I was like, oh, okay, this is going to tie in. We only got two pages of, you know, the fight between these Avengers, these new Avenger members and Carnage. 
So I guess we're going to get a whole issue where they kind of flesh that fight out and then cut back to like some prior events or something or whatever. And uh, they don't do that at all. Um, this kind of subverted my expectations a little bit. It starts off and it shows the homeless in New York getting infected. Um, you know, the, the, the symbiotes coming up out of the sewers and grabbing homeless people and turning them into symbiotes uh, basically for carnage. And then it shows Captain America and everybody fighting them on the street. And then Spider-Man shows up and I'm just kind of wondering, I'm like, when does all this happen? I'm going to assume this happens maybe some Somewhere in between issues two and two uh, or something because I think at the end of two Eddie Brock shows up and he sees all the Avengers at Rex's place uh, but that's also the same issue that they split up him and Peter split up so I guess this is when that happens so Peter Parker splits up and says I'm gonna go find some heroes and you go recruit some villains and as we know in the absolute carnage book he goes and recruits you know these new Avengers members because they've all had carnage symbiotes on them before so I was like, okay, so, you know, maybe that's the story they're going to tell here. And it looks like they do. That's that's what they do. They go back and tell, you know, how Spider-Man gathered all these heroes. And he's like going out in broad daylight and there's symbiotes walking around like zombies and they're slow. And, but then there's like other symbiotes that are running really fast at them. And it's like, again, that inconsistency of like how much, like it's daytime. Like he's like right here, he's recruiting Ben Grimm in the daytime with carnages running around. But yet when he split up with Eddie, and then met him back at Rex's, that was all in one night. So it's kind of, I don't know, like this this book is, and this series has been all over the place. And those little details, like I said, they don't ultimately affect the story, but when that much work isn't put into it, you just, I don't know, I get upset. Cause it's like, I mean, I spent $20 this week just on Venom Absolute Carnage stuff. <laughs> like that's all I bought this week. I think I got one Ghost Rider issue too, but that I had some cash on me and I was like, all right, this can't come out of my credit card, you know, budget for the week. It, I'm just going to pay cash for this Ghost Rider, um, like Marvel Tales issue. But the but the main 20 bucks I spent was on these four books. And uh, and I, I just got frustrated reading some of these. Like Scream, I said, like I said, it was pretty good. But this one, I'm just like, oh, really? This is just, an, this is just a story where it's Spider-Man recruiting these four, you know, Avenger members. The only exciting stuff in here was the Hawkeye stuff where they were cutting to Los Angeles and then Hawkeye, you know, being attacked in Los Angeles. And then he realizes he gets a message from Cap saying, hey, there's these two beacons, which I'm like, all right, cool. They're going to touch on the beacon stuff. Um, there's one in San Francisco, un, you know, underground. So, or they don't say where it is. He's got to go find it. So Hawkeye's like, okay, I got to go to San Francisco and take down a beacon. Got it. And then meanwhile, Spider-Man and the New York heroes are going to take down the beacon that they come across. So in, in New York, so they go underground in the subway and they find a beacon, but it's like the, that big tower that, you know, Carnage built. And there's a single person inside of it that somehow is powering the beacon. I, get, I don't know if they're the origin point of the beacon or how they're the power. They don't really explain it in this book. They don't really give you any answers. Uh, but one person apparently is really, uh, you know, the, 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 the battery, I guess, for the, the beacon. And so Wolverine naturally wants to kill that person. He's like, well, we got to kill them. And Spider-Man's like, no, we're going to take him alive. We're going to bring him to the hospital. We're going to try to try to save his life. And when they take him out of the machine, it, I guess it does power down the beacon. Again, a lot of things are a little unclear. And they bring him to you know a hospital and drop him off. And they're like, hey, other people might show up with these symptoms. Just run a scan on them. And the Sonics will like, you know, I guess disrupt whatever ailments has hurt them. And the lady's like, yeah, sure. Thanks, Captain America or whatever. And Spider-Man's like, hey, what about my thank you? You know, we're just being, you know, adding it, trying to add in some levity. But uh, really the Hawkeye stuff I thought was the best part of this book was, you know, every time they cut to Hawkeye and they show him going underground to the, the underground city of San Francisco where Lethal Protector took place. Uh, and they show him running around there and, you know, trying to save lives. He ends up saving this one woman, but he un unfortunately has to like shoot exploding arrows to like, you know, cause the cave to cave in and stuff and cause some of the city to cave in underground, which uh, I think destroys the beacon or at least knocks it offline. So at the end of this book, it looks like their mission is accomplished. I mean, you know, Hawkeye did his job, but he was willing to, you know, sacrifice some lives or at least cause a cave in, which might hurt some people that were down there. Uh, but ultimately, you know, Wolverine, he got outvoted and, you know, Spider-Man ended up uh, doing the right thing, obviously, and saving the guy and bringing him out. Uh, but I guess the beacons are down. And so this book ends with them going, okay, now that the beacons are down, we'll wait for Hawkeye to get here in New York. And then we're going to, you know, take our fight to, to Cletus Cassidy or Carnage. And meanwhile, Hawkeye's like, yeah, I'm coming Cap. Don't worry. I'll be in New York like in a matter of hours. So I guess that, you know, makes sense because, you know, Cap and all those guys go under and, uh, you know, when they get the codices taken out of them, 
and they are asleep for a couple hours. So that makes that's enough time for him to get in a Quinjet or something and get to New York in time. Uh, but that means when he arrives in, in New York, he's going to still have a codex in his spine. So I'm curious what is going to happen there with Hawkeye. And it says it's to be continued in Venom number 19. So, uh, you know, obviously I'm going to pick that up. That comes out like in a week or two. But uh, I was a little let down by this. I, I feel like issue four, it make, just makes me not like issue four even more so. Because issue four was like, all right, it kind of promised us a Venom Hulk versus Carnage fight. And it lasted three pages. And then later when Cap's like, hey, we're going to step up and fight too. I'm like, great. And then they get taken down in like two panels. So it's like, like really, I mean, it's not that I'm just gung-ho for just the fights and stuff. And there's more to it than just fighting. You know, you want story and everything like that. But I felt like the story was boring. And so in my in my opinion, I felt like I would have rather seen a fight at least um, and show some of these characters fighting each other than the story because the story is kind of boring me at this point. It's dragging on. It's, it's filler. It's just Eddie Brock, you know, just going off with this lofty, weighty dialogue that just doesn't work. And it doesn't, he's not really saying anything for like six pages. And I'm just like, it, you're, whatever dude like i don't know i'm just not digging it i just the, these books this week really brought me down and we're getting so close to the end that i didn't want to lose momentum so close to the end of the series because it built me up really good i was liking a lot of the stuff at least feeling okay about it um up until like this week and last week a little bit too like uh the amazing spider-man one i'm like eh, it's good but it's not like it's vital and it's, it's starting to lose me. But this one did too. I mean, it's an okay book. And the artwork's fine overall. And I like the Hawkeye stuff in it the most. But the rest of the stuff, I'm like, ah, I wish they would have just, uh, you know, showed, you know, like the battle between these four and Dark Carnage. And you get to see like Wolverine really trying to like kill Dark Carnage or whatever. Um, and then meanwhile, you know, and, but have the story told through Cap and Hawkeye's point of view. And you can do the flashbacks of Cap sending Hawkeye this message and tell him to go do it. Because when you're reading this, I'm like, all right, so Spider-Man's running around with these guys, but then he's also in the Deadpool book, which we're going to talk about next, and he's running around with Deadpool. Um, you know, it does, I don't know. I guess it's not supposed to be important of when exactly all this stuff is supposed to take place. It's supposed to be just like, all right, just read it and have fun. They're not really, you know, thinking that everyone's going to buy every tie-in issue. But then at the same time, then why make so many tie-in issues? You know, if you're not going to pay that much attention to the shared continuity and where everything is and stuff like, then why do it? You know, that's kind of my issue with it. So Avengers, I would say if Scream got a four out of five, I'm going to give Avengers a three out of five. Um, it was okay. It was just middle of the road. It didn't bum me out too much. Not like the ending of this one did. Uh, let's talk about this real quick because I like Frank Thierry and uh, he's nice enough to follow me on social media on Twitter and uh, I love his stuff and I feel like me and him are on the same wavelength a lot of times because uh, I'll be able, to, be able to predict sometimes what he's going to do but that's just because he's really good at laying down foundations and setting things up and then paying them off later and I'm so used to reading his stuff that I can kind of see where he's going sometimes and I like it uh, but this one really threw me through a loop and not really in a good way. Um, it starts off really strong, you know, uh, by the way, Frank Thierry wrote it, but Marcelo Ferreira and Jack Jadson did the pencil art on it. And then Jack also did some of the inks as well as Roberto Poggi, um, as so, you know, did the inks as well. So uh, they had a pretty full team on this, uh, but it starts off and it's got this great battle between Carnage and Deadpool. And again, I, it's, I think it's main Carnage. Uh, or no, no, it's Cletus Carnage. That's right. It's Cletus Carnage um, because they, they talk about that. So main Carnage is in the screen book. Cletus Carnage is in this book. And these, this artwork is really, really good. I'm not kidding. The, the art in this is, is definitely really spot on. The battle is brutal. And what I like is that there's enough dialogue in here where there's some character moments even in the battle. And this is what I'm talking about. This is where I was like, I wish some of those other books had this. I wish Absolute Carnage 4 had a little bit more of this or, or the Avengers book had a little bit more of this. So the start of this book is great. I really like the the beginning. I feel like the jokes are a little forced. Some of them, I, I wasn't, I didn't find myself laughing at some of them, but there was a couple that really got me. And I was like, okay, yeah, Frank's doing a really good job with the humor and, uh, and the action and balancing it out. But then Spider-Man shows up and then I just go, when is this happening? Like, when is this taking place? Uh, because Spider-Man is too busy. He's watching two little kids right now. And then he's also, you know, teamed up with Eddie Brock, split up from Eddie Brock. Maybe this is after he split up with Eddie Brock. He went and did this first and then ended up with the new Avengers. Or who, I guess who cares, really? I don't know why I keep bringing it up, but it's just, I don't know. These are just thoughts that pop in my head, and I like to talk about them because maybe you guys, I'm hoping maybe you guys will, you know, be like, you paid more attention on some level and go, hey, this is actually the order of things. And then maybe I'll go, okay, cool. And then I'll put my foot in my mouth and we'll all be fine after that. Uh, but uh, but I don't know. I just get, I get thrown through a loop sometimes when I'm just like, all right, I, you know, but I get that this was kind of a Spider-Man Deadpool team up. So I guess it makes sense to bring Spider-Man back into it. 
and there is some good dialogue back and forth, but then it just jumps. It's almost like, um, I don't know, maybe Frank had like a, an idea for how he wanted to end this or something. And then, I don't know, maybe he got a note to like do something different because it just kind of jumps. Like in this moment here, you have a carnage, you know, getting the one up on everybody. And then Deadpool just decides to leave. He's like, you know what? Our friendship is over and I'm cutting out. And he runs away and then Spider-Man gets hit here, but we don't see him get knocked out. There's no like fade to black where he loses consciousness or nothing like that, which I'm like, that's storytelling 101. Like what's going on? Because he gets hit here. And then the very next page, he's underground in front of the throne of, you know, Carnage. So I'm like, okay, so I guess this, maybe this is Carnage. You know, I guess I'm always thinking about the timeline, maybe after he ate Scream or something like that. And he's back and he's, um, you know, ready to get involved with, you know, the stuff that's going on above ground. Um, he hasn't changed into Eddie yet and gone and, you know, so this is obviously before issue three of Absolute Carnage. Um, but still, it's like, when I'm reading this, I'm like, what happened? Like, did so Spider-Man got knocked out? And they don't even really say it too much in the dialogue. It's just, you know, Spider-Man's there and he's, you know, on his knees. And then, you know, he's being presented by Cletus. And Cletus slash Norman says like, hey, uh, this is, you know, Spider-Man. I'm sorry I couldn't bring you Deadpool, but at least I brought you Spider-Man. And so Dark Carnage is like, fine, okay, I'll, I guess I'll take Spider-Man. I'll take what I can get. But then, you know, uh, Deadpool shows up with a great line. I like his intro line about B. Arthur. I thought it was pretty funny. Um, but he comes in and he's like, look, I'll trade myself for Spider-Man. And, uh, you know, and Carnage is like, good, because you're the unicorn. You're the one who's been bonded with everything. And he's like, well, I don't really see myself as a unicorn. He goes, uh, but whatever. He's like, fine. Yeah, I have four codices in me from the, you know, the hybrid suit. So if you want me, fine, but you got to let Spider-Man go. And then so Carnage is like, uh, sure, we'll make that deal. And he brings Deadpool over, digs into his spine. And as he's trying to rip out the codices, uh, he sees a bomb in there that says, uh, boom goes the dynamite, uh, which is uh, another great reference. And then, blam, everything blows up. And I thought, okay, there's the hideout's gone. Maybe that, uh, you know, that tower that he was, you know, around, that beacon, maybe that's gone now too. But of course, that's taken care of in another book. But this is the way they could have taken it out if they really wanted to. Um, so I was like, okay, that's, you know, neat. And that was a great move. He, had, he blew himself up uh, with the codices. So I thought, okay, they're, the codices are gone. There's no way, you know, Carnage could have sucked them out. If he blew up his, if he put a bomb on his spine and blew himself up, how did the codices survive? And if it did survive, why not show it? Because in Absolute Carnage number four, I think, uh, you know, Miles Morales says, hey, I saw through Carnage's eyes and we all had the hive mind. And I know he has the codice or the codex from uh, Deadpool. And it's like, okay, but how does he know that? I mean, you know, because that doesn't happen in this issue. We just see an explosion and then everyone's gone. Carnage got away. All the carnages ran away for some odd reason. I don't know why they would just run away after one little explosion. Um, it was a pretty big one, I guess. It knocked a couple of the other symbiotes over, but it doesn't kill any of them. So if it's not strong enough to kill the little halflings or whatever, then it's not going to kill or even probably hurt uh, Dark Carnage that much. So I'm just, I don't know. I felt like a little confused at the end here. And then when he goes and saves, you know, Wade, they're getting chased out by all these other symbiotes. And then like, you know, Dark Carnage is rebuilding himself or, or whatever, I guess, because that's what it looks like he is there, but it doesn't say that that's Dark Carnage. Uh, but then, you know, Wade wakes up. He's like, where are my legs? Where are my legs? He's like, come on, let's get out of here. And then this is where the second jump, because that first jump just threw me off. I was like, wait, Spider-Man's underground now? What the heck? What's going on? He, it didn't show him blackout or anything. Um, then this is where the second jump happens. Uh, it says, weeks later, a crummy Deadpool safe house somewhere. And then it's Spider-Man taking care of Wade, and they end on this, like, Looney Tunes joke where Wade pretends like he can't walk so that Spider-Man's cooking dinner for him and bringing him food. And then Spider-Man finds out he can walk, obviously. And then that's how the book ends. And I was like, okay. I understand it's a Deadpool book. It's got to have some humor. It's got to have some levity and, and maybe on a, on a joke or whatever, but it didn't work for me. Uh, so I was with this book, really, really with this book up until like the last six pages and then I, or six or seven pages. And then I was out. I was like, okay, the jump there to underground, kind of unnecessary. They could have just done the bomb thing up on land and they could have had, uh, you know, um, Cletus slash Norman be the one that gets blown up because he was the one who was directly fighting with them. Um, I understand you want some closure there with, uh, with, you know, the real carnage and Deadpool. So that makes sense too, you know, doing it that way. So either way would have worked, but I just like, why not bring him up on land? Why go underground and do that? Uh, it's just, I don't know. It, it seemed a little, it seemed like a little too much for me at the end there and it just jumped around a bit. So I don't know if maybe there was just trouble ending this or what, uh, or maybe there was a different plan. I don't know. It just, it, but those last few pages, I'm like, they're funny, but it just, 
I don't know, it just didn't fit. I, I would have liked to see a little bit more closure. I would have liked to know definitively, besides one random line in Absolute Carnage 4 by Miles Morales, I would have liked to know definitively in this book if Carnage actually got the codice, if show him absorb it, show him grow stronger, and then them, you know, be like, oh, we're screwed or whatever. I like the bomb thing. That was a good gag. But, you know, to me, I would assume that would destroy his spine completely. And that's why he has to grow a new one. And it would destroy the codices inside of him as well. But I guess not. I don't know. So uh, you guys let me know. What did you think of this one? Um, I would say if I was rating Absolute Carnage, I would give it a 2.5 out of 5. Um, so, you know, it was almost almost the same level as Avengers. But that's because the beginning was so strong. The ending just kind of lost me a little bit. But the artwork is still really good, so I like that. Um, but yeah, so as I talked about each one, the digital code should have popped up on screen. So hopefully you guys saw those. And I want to know your thoughts. You know, what is your thoughts on Scream number three, Avengers number one tie-in, and uh, Deadpool versus Absolute Carnage number three? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. If you agree with me, disagree with me, whatever it is, let me know down below. We'll continue our conversation down there. So I'm glad I did all these in one video because then that way I can, you know, stay up to date. I, I was just worried. I was like, I got to do these three. And like, I think there's six more tie-in issues uh, to go with this series. And then we're probably going to get movie news and other news coming up soon so i just didn't want to like bog down and do too many episodes you know like i don't know i just i, I don't know i think like that sometimes i'm like ah, i, I want to finish the season and i didn't want to like end like because we did that in a previous season where i was like reviewing something i think it was a uh, like venomized or one of those where we got to like issue three or four and then i had to like end the season and come back the next season and do it and i was like i just didn't feel like doing that this time because i actually do want to take a break after this, uh, you know, I want to get at least maybe a couple weeks in of a break because things are going to get crazy with work for the holidays. So I may actually take like a real, real break after episode 450. And that's why I want to make sure we talk about all the topics that I want to get through before that episode, uh, you know, comes out. So, you know, thank you guys for being so patient with me with all the other stuff last week. But now that doing all this in one episode is great because now I'm caught up on everything, all the comic stuff. And then now I'm just going to sit back and not make any episodes for a couple days you know i'm gonna just kind of uh take some personal time you know call my mom i still haven't told her some of the news about what's going on with me and stuff health wise so um you know i want to kind of get back to my regular life for a little bit um but i'll try to get more stuff ghost rider other things to you guys like next week i'll get my friday 13th reviews coming up soon too uh, but i'm glad we caught up on the comics because in this way i can take a little break uh, from the comics for a while and uh, all we're going to do from now on from this till the end of the season is probably just wrap up the last tie-in issues that come out and i might do multiple ones in each episode like i did with this one just to you know move things along uh, and then also try to save a couple episodes at the end in case any big movie news comes out because once i hit four 50 and we end the season i am going to take a break and so if any movie news comes up during that time i'm just going to wait until you know we bring back season four to talk about it so uh anyway let me know your thoughts on that and everything else down below and as always we'll continue our conversation down there thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and if you got the digital codes for these issues let me know what you think and what your review is down below as well thanks so much see you in the future peace